Okay. Uh, hello, my name is Jen Feng and uh, I am the resident volunteer from Haira Brauchi Place and I'm a part of the Chinatown resident volunteer for today and we are here to educate, support people. Hi there, my name is uh, my name's Derek. I work at Interim CDA. I've been a long time community member in the area. Hi everyone, my name is Cecilia and I work as the Public Safety Coordinator in Chinatown ID. Okay, hello Cecilia. So <laughs> please introduce yourself and give a summary of your current community organizing work or volunteer activities. Yes, so um, just like I said, I am Cecilia <laughs> and uh, I am the Public Safety Coordinator uh, in the CID. So um, I, uh, I, uh, I work as a community liaison in this neighborhood to um, connect people and um, the city departments, partner agencies, and uh, like the businesses, residents together and to help them find the right resources and information to help them solve the public safety issues and concerns. And, uh, also, actually, I'm housed by CID BIA, so I have a lot of uh, connections and I work closely with um, BIA uh, people. Uh, for example, I help um, our marketing manager to do some events and um, to do some outreach in the biz like in the neighborhood with the businesses. And I also um, help our uh, sanitation manager to do needle pickup training and. Uh, Whenever like residents or businesses they are having problems with graffiti, I will also help them to solve that kind of problem. So um, yeah, that's basically uh, what I do um, daily. Okay, now comes the second question. Uh, a common issue for our community is public safety, and it's kind of like a breakup question. And the first breakup question is, in what ways have we worked with public safety in your respective job role as a neighbor where you live in or in a volunteer role? Uh, yeah. So, yeah, as I said, my name's Derek and I work at Interim the CDA. So a lot of my job right now is community organizing on many different levels. I talk to residents every day. Um, about through various activities and programs about uh, about you know what their needs are, what people are seeing, um, about you know stuff like rental assistance or stuff like uh, like public safety or you know even like even like simple things like knowing like where in line do they stand for senior housing and stuff like that. Uh, but also, I uh, you know occasionally help residents get involved in the kind of like bigger uh, picture issues around you know like immigration programs or around like money for affordable housing or about community uh, needs that you know hopefully get included in various developments. Um, but also, you know, I also help uh, talk to and work with like community organizations, both big ones and small ones in the neighborhood, but also, you know, other places beyond just Chinatown and National District area, you know, places like Rainier Valley, South King County, uh, Beacon Hill, and, you know, all over the place, really. Um, and, you know, I've done lots of other stuff too in the past related to the community. You know, I've volunteered at domestic violence programs volunteered, you know, to uh, help tutor after kids after school, stuff like that. Um, volunteered at, you know, a variety of different, uh, you know, like campaigns, get out the vote kinds of things at like smaller community organizations. Uh, I just really enjoy uh, volunteering, helping the community whenever I can. Thank you. Um, now comes the second question. A common issue for our community is public safety. In what ways have you worked with public safety in your respective job role, as a neighbor where you live, or in a volunteer role? 
The mobiles can be as a community group and individuals promote a more safe community, city, and a society for all. Yeah, so as you know, I'm sure, you know, all of probably almost everyone looking at this agrees public safety is a big issue and of importance to the community, um, to lots of different communities. And so as, you know, as my work in the International District goes, I definitely listen to lots of uh, residents and discuss the issue of public safety with a lot of different people. Um, we hold like resident check-in calls for folks uh, to express like if there are specific public safety issues uh, that are of concern and uh, we do our best actually to report, report it to you know people like Cecilia here but also like other people sometimes whoever's appropriate such as the police or such as you know firefighters or um, other people you know whoever it might be uh, but also you know we something I was proud of was uh, due to partially our efforts at interim we got uh, we got help jumpstart a program for the this, this neighborhood specifically called the jumpstart program and that was in coalition with other people who also you know work at organizations in the international district area but more as an individual you know I think uh, stuff like you know doing block watches is really important for public safety I think pointing out uh, where the lights aren't so good in your community is really important for public safety I think that there's a lot of different things that we all can do big and little every day to promote public safety and be a good neighbor okay thank you there let's go to Cecilia yeah, so um, I didn't talk about my uh, job too much in the last question because I was the public safety coordinator. Um, like to answer this question number two is basically my full-time job. So, um, so here is what I do every day. So um, every month I uh, hold one meeting called public safety forum meeting. And during this meeting, we gather people from different city departments like parks, ISPD, DON, and also partner agencies, and also like representatives from the community, like people from Interim. Uh, we share like incidents, what, what happened uh, in the last month, and what incidents we had in CID, and what trends and hotspots we have recently. And um, after I got all this information, I collect them and summarize them. And then I send this information to our public safety council. So uh, we have, um, we will have four numbers uh, from, uh, four, sorry, four city member from, uh, four member from the city and um, nine members from this community. And we sit together to talk about how to address public safety issues in this community. And I will share all the information I collected in the last month, including what I have from the public safety forum meeting together, and report all this to them. And then we will discuss what the next step we should do and what the work plan or like uh, we can uh, generate or if there is some um, grant opportunities we can share with the community to solve all the public safety um, problems. And besides these two important meetings every month, I also uh, work closely with um, people like from SPD. Um, we do outreach together uh, sometimes with the businesses and the residents, especially those multifamily apartments, to um, share like crime prevention assessment information with them and help them to uh, like and give them information or recommendations to help them improve their uh, security measures. And uh, besides that, um, I also record and analyze all the information I gathered. Sometimes I can provide resources and information to people, sometimes I cannot. But these data and uh, like all the incidents are really important to get recorded and uh, make sure we have these in our system, in SPD system, and uh, they will be used uh, to like, um, solve like policy level uh, questions and make policy level changes. And so um, 
what we can do as a community group and inter uh, individuals to promote um, like a more safety community. The first thing and the most important thing I want you to know is that please call 911 whenever you feel it's needed. Um, so I know people are having different concerns about calling 911 or report to the police, but I just wanted to let you know that first, if you th feel like you have a language barrier, they have interpreters helping you uh, at the 911 calling center. And if you uh, feel like SPD will now respond or they will not respond in time, it is not sure. And I know, like we all know that they're having this um, staff shortage problem, but you don't know if they will report or like respond or not until you call them. And also, I know sometimes people are having some trust issues with SPD. And if you have like questions or concerns, feel free to let me know. And uh, I really appreciate your voice. And we can work together to and give recommendations or suggestions to the city and uh, like figure out what are the best, better or better solutions. And sometimes people also feel that they only have a piece of information and they're not sure if this will be helpful to SPD. And the truth is, maybe the information you have is the key to solve the case. Mm, there will be multiple callers and uh, like you know the, um, the clothes the suspect is wearing or that person knows the uh, driver, like driving the, the, the license plate, uh, the number, and uh, all the information get together, um, it is, it will be really helpful for the police officers to solve the case. And uh, I also wanted to uh, make sure that um, you know your neighbor and you know that you're responsible for the safety of your building and your community. It is not like um, if you're living in a big building like the Hiroya, he, how do you say the name? Hirobrash. Hirobrash. <laughs> yes, that one. Uh, it's not like you get into the building and and like you're totally safe. Uh, you want to make sure nobody tailgates you or and nobody um, like gets into the door with your help. And knowing your neighbors will help you to know like who are the people like you don't have to worry about and who are the suspicious people. And uh, like a lot of incidents happen when you let strangers into your building and um, like everything happens before that it will be too late to prevent. Um, besides that, I also want to make sure that if you have some suggestions or you want to contribute to this community or you want to make effort in this public safety field but you don't know how to, feel free to contact me. And um, my phone number is 971-202-0242 and my uh, email address is C-E-C-I-L-I-A-L at SeattleChinatownID.com. And I can share my uh, business card with Derek and everybody who needs it later so that you'll know um, who is the go-to person you can talk to when you have concerns in public safety issues. Okay, thank you, Cecilia. Now goes to our third question. Uh, there are a lot of issues around people's job. Some people are super talented and are not getting hired. Other have been able to find works easily out of pandemic. What are you seeing in your job, rules, or the community you serve or live in? Is there any effective community action you are seeing on this? Like Jian Feng said, I do have a lot of um, thoughts about um, job planning, even though I just graduated in 2020, but um, I know it has been a very difficult year for a lot of people who are trying were trying to find a job or who are still trying to do so. Um, so I, I, it took me a few months to uh, land a full-time job and before that I was working as a um, office manager in a uh, nonprofit in Seattle. And I, uh, besides me, I know I had uh, a lot of schoolmates, they were um, like working in a grocery store and or like a shopping malls or small businesses to make a living before um, they can find a, like a satisfying job. Um, yeah, a little bit of background information. I uh, graduated from Evan School um, with a Master of Public Administration um, degree. Yeah, Master degree? Yes. Uh, and uh, there were a lot of 
organizations or public se sectors which uh, we usually will choose to work for, they were not hiring or they had their budget cut, so it was really difficult for a lot of people to find a job. Um, and uh, uh, that's true that some people, they find it's really hard, but sometimes uh, it's really easy for like someone to get a job like basically in no time. So it's basically about luck. Um, I just want to say whenever you feel uh, you got too many rejections or you feel so depressed because you cannot land on like a satisfying job, it's not, bit, it's actually not your fault. It's, um, I mean, not at anybody's fault. It's just uh, you're maybe not the best fit of that company, but you're definitely the best one, like best version of yourself. So uh, just keep calm and uh, keep going and I believe um, you will definitely find what you want. And, uh, and besides like looking for jobs actively, you also want to reach out to people and ask for help. I know there are a lot of people who are able to help and who are willing to, but they don't have actually, they don't have time to like ask everybody like, hey, do you need my help or do you need a hand? So you really need to take initiatives and try to look for some opportunities. Like I know that in Tarum, they're like having a lot of job events to help people and provide resources and connect them with like different organizations or companies. And I also know a uh, big nonprofit called Seattle Job Initiatives and they like have a lot of opportunities like, like helping you find a job too. And uh, like there are also like some people of color community organizations and uh, they will have some job events career fair for you to attend and I even know that like there is a uh, small nonprofit called Ada Developers uh, Ac Academy and their their headquarters actually in Chinatown and they help people of color and LGBTQ group to like become a uh, software engineer and I just want to say if you have like your dream just go for it so I, I feel what Cecilia just said, but also what this question talks about, and that I feel like in the community there's a lot of people who do have, like, got their jobs back at, you know, the restaurant or at the grocery store, um, or, you know, who, like, work in, like, what's called, like, white-collar jobs. So, like, they're, like, you know, they're accountants or something, and so their job was never, you know, really affected by the pandemic uh, but there are lots of people you know who for various reasons they they you know maybe the restaurant job hasn't come back fully yet or um, or like you know they didn't really like the job they were working or you know maybe for some other reason uh, they're uh, they're you know without a job right now and I agree with much of what Cecilia said in that you know um, I just, you know, I don't want them to get too hard, like think of themselves too harshly or, you know, look down on themselves because it's just a matter of time until you find the, the right fit for you. And I know, you know, personally, because Interim is one of the organizations that employs these people, that there are people who are called employment navigators who can help you find a job. If, uh, if that's what you want, it can help you think about like what kind of job you want and what kind of, what you might have to do with your resume to do that. I also would encourage everyone to look into uh, apprenticeship jobs. There are jobs where you don't have to go to school and to get them. And if you complete what's called an apprenticeship, which is basically like a paid internship, um, you can get a like the full paid job after like you know four months six months something like that and then you know you can make you know like more than fifty thousand dollars a year like sixty thousand dollars seventy thousand dollars a year off of you know like not having a college degree at all um and so this is a relatively like quick way to you know make a middle class like income like if you can find a way to you know to you know attend the apprenticeship to become like an electrician or a plumber like you know I, I suggest that very heavily I realize these are not perfect um, 
you know, professions in that, you know, you might need to have decent English uh, comprehension in order to, you know, attend this. So obviously it's not the best fit for everyone. But I think that's something our community, you know, should consider because there's, um, you know, do we want to build or find a way to build the uh, capacity to have like uh, apprenticeships in partial in partial English? Because um, like you know there have been discriminatory professions in the past where after community out advocacy community protest they you know like let go of the barriers that kept like people of color out of those jobs. This is uh, famous in the construction trades. But you know, there's other jobs like that too, and so I think that people should be just be doing your best and think think outside the box um, about what might fit, be a good fit for you, and then definitely get together if you or maybe you plus uh, your neighbors or you and your neighbors and a community organization want to expand job access in your community. Get together and think about. What would that look like? Uh, now comes our fourth question. What was the pandemic changed the way you organize with your job, volunteering as a neighbor or other rules you might have? Okay, now comes Cecilia. Yeah, so uh, from my uh, job's perspective, um, I started this role like in this year, February. So. Um, I don't really know how it would like how it was looked like before the pandemic, but I do know that uh, after I started, everything was online, and most of them is still online, except like like several events. For example, this one today. Um, but actually, even though it can be really challenging and hard to uh, do outreach work in the community, but like holding public meetings, it's actually easier for me because um, it's really easy for people to go into an online meeting because they only need to click some stuff. And uh, we got pretty good participant rate and uh, people talk about their um, feelings and what they saw and online and I feel uh, even though it was pretty hard for me to get familiar with everything, but um, I still did pretty well, <laughs> I'd say. And uh, and I also know that because of this pandemic, uh, some uh, like the community-based organizations in this neighborhood, like BIA, Skipta, and uh, Friends of Little Saigon, they come together and they established a small business relief team and they helped a lot of businesses to apply for like city grants. And uh, I also know that Skipta, uh, they, they were doing a lot of uh, grocery deliveries to like uh, the residential buildings so that our senior citizens do not need to like risk their life to go to grocery stores. Um, so um, there were a lot of uh, community efforts to help people um, uh, live a, like an easier life during this hard time and I find that is really nice. And from my personal life perspective, um, pandemic definitely caused uh, like a lot of loss for me. Like, um, I didn't go to school after uh, like for the last quarter, and like everything was online, and uh, everybody was busy with like job hunting or they're taking care of their family or their own health. And I didn't talk to too many people like in the past year or so. But um, it was a good time for me to stay with myself and uh, question myself, how do I become a better uh, person and how, like, what is the meaning of life and work? Like, like so on and so forth. So, um, like, I appreciate the um, pandemic time that it really caused a lot of difficulties, but I had a time to stay with myself and slow down and think about a lot of questions. So. Yeah, that was my uh, pandemic story. <laughs> uh, you know, like everyone else, I, you know, I had never used Zoom before, you know, the pandemic started. And so the pandemic has really changed a lot of, you know, my job, but also other, you know, other things I do, such as volunteering. Um, you know, uh, a lot of my my job to somebody was doing in-person outreach and hosting like small community events 
like before the pandemic. And so obviously, like initially when the pandemic started, we're not, you know, we weren't allowed to do any of that. And so that was really, uh, really different for me. And I wasn't really sure like how I was supposed to do anything. Um, but, you know, with the advice, on the advice of some of the people at Interim and also uh, just like examples set by other organizations, I was like, uh, I was like, oh, okay, well, you know, we'll drop off information with people in their food bags and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, we found a lot of ways to do like drop off, basically like drop off information or communicate via WeChat or like other stuff like that. Um, with people and then uh, depending on the group of people you know also like Zoom would work for some folks you know especially if I was working more with like the other people who work at the other community organizations like those people could meet via Zoom and then like if I was working with like other people like like sometimes the business people can meet via Zoom but not all the time and um, but especially meeting with talking and communicating with residents, it was, um, you know, a lot of dropping stuff off at first. Um, and, you know, as the pandemic goes, went on and, you know, people got, we all got our shots, uh, then it became more of a thing where, you know, we can do like small outside in-person stuff and whatnot. And that, then that became a lot easier as far as the job went. Um, as far as like volunteering, and other things um, I did, like definitely, um, you know, the the beginning of the pandemic was hard for me because I'm like an extrovert and I really like talking to people and I like, you know, uh, I like like interacting with people and I don't like sitting in my apartment all day. And so, uh, but you know, it's it was like, it was tough, I had to tough it out and just, uh, just get to the place where we were all vaccinated and that was a lot a lot easier um so you know i definitely appreciate uh i appreciate the community where i live more, uh, more now i live in renton i definitely have become more cognizant of like renton community issues um and i think it's important for all of us to become cognizant of the community issues in our community and you know do the best we can to address them and so you know, I hope I hope I can, you know, help, you know, the people with watching this video to get through the pandemic in that sense and uh, push on through to the other side of the pandemic where we'll be able to more freely, you know, gather again. Okay, thank you, Derek. Now comes our fifth question. Have you seen, been a part of, or heard of organizing and advocating uh, efforts where youth and elders work together with the board, border group. What was it like if yes? Um, now, Derek. Yeah, I've, uh, I've heard of a lot of different, different things where youth and elders work together for everyone else to, you know, to make some kind of change for the broader group. Uh, one thing I want to share because I was a part of it was uh, this thing I was part of called the Resident Action Project. And it was a group of people who were organized by another, a different nonprofit called the Washington Low Income Housing Alliance. And what they were were a bunch of people who lived in kind of like all over King County. And some of them lived in Snohomish County or Pierce County, I think. And they uh, came from all different like circumstances. Some of them lived in like trailer parks. Some of them were literally homeless. Some of them lived in like the, the housing authority communities like over on Yesler Terrace. Some of them, you know, lived in other different situations kind of like that. And they, uh, they came, to, came together with the help of the housing lines to, uh, to like kind of like advocate through like creative means. Like they would create like uh, music videos. They create like uh, like artwork related to like to advocacy on like housing issues. They would create uh, like uh, like other stuff. Uh, they would go sometimes they would go door knocking to help get their neighbors to vote. 
uh, sometimes. And, like, you know, they did a lot of, like, other stuff like that. But I got to be their student assistant. And so it was, like, I was the one, like, you know, buying them food and, like, printing stuff for them and other stuff like that. But also got to participate. And the people in this program, like, they really, like, had a really broad range of ages. Like, some of them were, like, super young. Like, they were, like, 17, 16, 15. Some of them, you know, there's me. I was, like, 22, 23 at the time. So I was, like, pretty young myself. But then, like, there are also, like, people, like, their middle ages in the program. Like, this one guy, he had uh, hitchhiked from Georgia. Like, and his uh, father was a Baptist minister. And so he hitchhiked from Georgia to be in the South for some reason that I'm not clear on. But, uh, but he got to, uh, he was part of the program. And he would give, like, these sermons to open up the meetings and, like, events. And it was, like, really powerful to hear. And so that was really cool. It was, like, unique. And people uh, were able to come together and do stuff together and did lots of, like, creative, uh, lots of creative things. And so I was, like, really happy to be a part of that. And I think it's really fun whenever, you know, lots of different people can come together to, you know, improve the community. Thank you, Derek. Now it goes to Cecilia. Yeah, so uh, normally um, my work doesn't involve kids because we don't want them to worry about, like, robberies or break-ins. Um, but I did um, run, like, uh, facilitate one event uh, in this uh, August um, in the uh, CID neighborhood called National Night Out. So um, uh, that was, I think that was a uh, advocacy at first because we were like trying to improve um, people's public safety awareness and uh, send out some public, like personal safety, uh, like small stuff to like our uh, neighbors, like kids and uh, senior cities is, so um, I think that counts. So um, it worked really well because we invited people like from uh, SPD, like police officers and firefighters to this event, and we also had um, people from SPU and from parks uh, come to the event and everybody sit together and have some food, enjoy some um, drinks, and we wanted to play some music, but uh, we didn't have like the electricity in the Downey Chin Park, unfortunately. Um, but still, we uh, let the kids uh, see like how firefighters work, how their big, uh, like the truck, how it works. And uh, people got the opportunity to talk with the police officers to build more connections and to get familiar with each other. And uh, we also had a, uh, uh, SPD also has a uh, police officer who can speak Cantonese and I think, um, and he talked with the neighbor, uh, the, the community a lot, and I think um, the turnout was really good, and I was really happy that we did this event because that is like this August. It's basically um, just after um, most people get shot, the vaccination. So it's really nice to see people come out and sit together and play with the kids and. Um, um, adults talk to each other. Yeah. Thank you, Cecilia. Now it's our next question. Who you, when you recruit uh, for volunteers, members, uh, community, ask, etc., what do you look for? Um, so, as I mentioned earlier, I was working as an office manager in a nonprofit, and even though the position title is office manager, but I was basically doing everything for the nonprofit. Uh, so I, uh, as the only one who got paid, uh, who got paid in that uh, organization, we uh, recruited like um, we constantly have twenty to thirty ish um, undergrad interns, and I was responsible for recruiting them. And uh, by uh, talking to those many undergrad kids, I think. Um, and work with them. I think the most important thing I seek for is um, being accountable, being reliable, being stable, and uh, being willing to learn. Uh, because um, those students, they're like in their 18s, 19s, they're really young, and they don't really have too many skills. And we were like um, 
like the first organization or the first opportunity they have in the uh, community to uh, give or to um, practice their skills uh, they learned in the school. So it really didn't matter if they like are really good at communication or marketing or fundraising. It, what matters is if they uh, reply to my messages in time and they don't disappear without telling anyone. And I think it applies to like a lot of um, job job positions or like uh, or like opportunities. I think the most important thing is that you um, you have. Like you, you know that you're going to um, give one hundred percent to the position or to your job, and you're you're going to be a responsible poor person and put everything together and um, let everybody know that you are the go-to person. They can uh, ask for help or um, like you will um, like you uh, make your promise and you keep it. I think that is like really important and. Uh, uh, I'm also trying to be that kind of person too. Thank you, Cecilia. There we go. Ahead. Yeah. So when um, in the various things I do when I'm recruiting, it's always it's basically this combination of like how like you can only talk to people who are interested in listening to you to a certain degree. So um, so you know you have to go like at my at my job at interim like. There's you know different groups that uh, that you know we host like you know groups for seniors to you know get food um, groups for you know people to garden in Danny Wu Garden uh, groups for like the wild youth uh, you know to have youth programs and you know like different groups like that and so like those are all people you know who know who interim is and. Uh, are, you know, to some degree trust up, trust us to, you know, be knowledgeable on certain subjects. And so that's all, like, sometimes people I can go recruit for different things depending on what it is. Uh, but and then also, like, there's people who I've gotten to know, like, over time uh, who, you know, maybe live at here at Place or they live somewhere else in the community or they work at one of the organizations or, like, the restaurants. And so th those are also people who like I know. And so those are therefore people who know interim or know me are the most likely people to like, you know, be willing to uh, to hear from me. If like, I'm like, oh, hey, we're trying to get people to like, you know, to s write this letter, sign on to this, you know, idea. Like, those are the most likely people because they know who I am or they know who interim is and they're like, oh, okay. Yeah, maybe let's hear about it. Um, but you know, it goes into your personal, like my personal life too. It's like um, if I want, like I've wanted people to do the night watch with me before, and so you know, you, you don't just ask your random neighbor to do that. You ask like your friend or your acquaintance, like if they want to do, you know, the volunteer activity with you. Um, so and to that degree, you know, getting to know other people like you know friends acquaintances co-workers uh, you know people in your in your senior group anything really is uh, is really important for you know recruitment for getting things done in the community and whatnot yeah okay now comes our wrap-up question um, <laughs> finally oh, what are some <laughs> of the outcomes you wanted to see from your past efforts uh, did they happen? What did you respond if they didn't? Um, now, Cecilia. I'm the public safety coordinator, but my job is not to eliminate every single incident happened in this um, neighborhood. What I do is to make sure people have a person who can trust and they know how to follow up with the city and they know how, uh, like if they have a resource to rely on or if they can have someone to talk to or if they have a like a pipe to make some changes and I am that pipe. Um, so I think um, I will be, I think, oh, yeah, so uh, the outcomes I wanted to see is that people can trust me and people can come and ask me like when they need help especially when like really bad things happen to them. And um, I, 
I say that yes. Um, I I think all these things did happen um, because I have like uh, a lot of business owners like they have built uh, connections with me and also some community members they will talk to like all the residents or other community members in this neighborhood and they will let me know what happened and because they know that I will reach out to um, the city or other organizations to follow up and to make sure I can get them an answer even though sometimes it's not satisfying or it is not the final solution but I'm pushing stuff like going forward so um, I'd say that is like what am I trying to do and uh, if sometimes not like the best result happen I know I think communication is always the most important thing and I will because we all have one common goal is that we want to make sure this community or this neighborhood is getting more and more safe uh, so um, yeah when uh, some something we don't want to happen actually happened I will like talk to people and make sure that we're having the same goal and we're on the same page and we just like maybe had some uh, miscommunication, mi misunderstanding or like uh, I'd like to hear like them out and understand what they're thinking and help them find the better solutions. Thank you Cecilia and Stroke James Derrick. Okay, um, so I think like somewhat similar to Cecilia, overall, my uh, goals are that residents, uh, other organizations, uh, like community groups, and uh, businesses uh, know me as like, that's Derek. He does policy stuff at Interim, and he works on like, is like issues related to like like, you know, gentrification and, like, all these other things, housing issues. And, like, you know, I've, I've, I can confirm that, indeed, like, the community groups and, uh, like, some of the business owners and the residents do identify me as, like, as that person. And it's kind of, it's kind of interesting in that sometimes I think they mistake me for, a, like, a housing case manager. Like, they think I'm, like, the rental assistance person. So we have to, like, correct that that uh, assumption which you know I think makes some sense but um, but yeah so that's definitely happened that's definitely happened in the community and like on like a more specific level uh, before the pandemic I was able to for instance drive with some residents down to Olympia and participate in some of the advocacy days and they learned a lot about you know advocacy in general about you know the fact that uh, we have a state legislator and all this other stuff and uh, so that you know was something where you know the goal of you know having residents be informed about the public policy process you know was met and I was really happy to see that and uh, another you know example is you know before my time I know that some senior residents went down to City Hall with uh, some of my coworkers to like observe and to learn about what was being talked about and stuff like that. And I know that they found that interesting at that time. Um, and so, you know, uh, stuff like that can happen to the public uh, policy process coming out of COVID. Uh, I have plans, for instance, to bring residents to a environmental justice uh, facility that is basically helping like, helping like clean the environment through how it's built, basically. And so that's another example of residents uh, learning about, you know, ways to change the, you know, society, how it gets done. Great. Thank you so much, Terry and Cecilia, for coming today. You guys have done an amazing speech that educates um, people. And thank you, Alan, for translating. We cannot do this without you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.